Welcome back to part two. This will be of four of uh, remaking a gondola here. So in the last part, we finished adding all our texture and getting kind of body work done to this gondola. And now we're going to start adding paint to this thing. So, uh, yeah, I'll just show you what I do is I uh, start with kind of a fluorescent orange color for rust. And I'll sprinkle that over some spots. Um, and then brown, I have like a chocolate brown and nutmeg brown, I believe it's called. And the main brown I use in kind of all my weathering, honestly, is this earth brown. So I have a pretty good quantity of that. And then uh, lastly, I use some black as well because the railroad's a dirty, grimy place. So yeah, a combination of those kind of colors is all I really use. And um, let's go ahead and get started painting this thing here. So this is kind of the look after you've added the fluorescent orange to the car. Um, and it looks like a mess, honestly, because there's still bare white in between and it's just fluorescent orange. But I go ahead and keep blending the colors until it looks right. Um, so I'll grab some darker light brown here and kind of mix them together. I think I'll use a dark brown here and just kind of feather over the same sort of spots until it starts blending together. Um, so I'll do that right now. Here's kind of the progress that we're looking at on our inside of the car here with some paint in it. Um, it's still drying, obviously it looks wet, but it's coming along nicely. Keep working on this and then spray some clear on the top. So I'm gonna get some clear on top of this thing and I don't use anything too special. Just some uh, Rust-Oleum Matte Clear, honestly, from Home Depot next to me. And um, try to just get it in the interior of the car here, but I'll give that a nice spray and let it sit up and dry here for about 30, 45 minutes outside. Now that we've got our car back inside and that first kind of spray of clear is dry, it's time to work on the bottom of this car. And I don't do too much detailing with paint wise on the bottom of the cars, because um, you don't really see it as much when it's rolling down the track and stuff. So. Just kind of get a general mix of black and gray and grimy colors together and just kind of spread that on the car. So I'll work on that right now. So while I'm waiting for the rest of this car to kind of dry up, I set it to the side and I get started on working on painting the uh, trucks and wheels just so they can kind of dry in between as well since there's four wheels to do and they take a few coats. Um, so I'll start with the truck here and I make sure that at least on one side of this thing I paint kind of the entire thing um, and I'll do the same thing with the wheel and that one will be facing outside when I go to reinstall these on the car. Um, so I'll go ahead and paint the truck and wheel here real quick and get moving on. And here you can see I'm starting to paint the inside of the wheel and the center axle kind of as well. And I only do this for two out of the four wheels. Um, and then it'll be the two outside wheels when we go to reassemble the car that are closest to the coupler pockets, kind of the more exposed ones that you see. And it wouldn't hurt to do this to all four, definitely, um, but I only do it for the two just to save a little extra step of time. Um, but I really think it makes a pretty big difference on those other twos, and you can see it in some of the pictures and stuff if you go back to the beginning of the video. Um, but yeah, just make sure you get a good coating over all kind of inside metal surfaces, otherwise your eye will be drawn right to them. Um, and yeah, go ahead and do this to two wheels here, and... Um, I'll show you what it looks like together with the truck in just a sec. Here it is, just kind of an example of what it'll end up looking like with the wheel kind of installed in the truck here. It still looks a little like two 
orange rusty to me, so I'll give it a little more washed down black look. Um, painting the wheels is definitely one of my favorite ways to improve a model, and it really does improve any model, honestly. Pretty simple step. Um, so yeah, now that I've done one wheel and truck here, I'm gonna get back to painting the actual model itself. So you can see that um, the color is starting to come along on this thing here definitely it's pretty good to a point where I like it um, definitely liking it a lot better than it looked originally here the one side kind of the more trashed and battered side on this thing I'm getting pretty close to being happy with the color and textures that we have going on here um, so I'll show you kind of a close-up overview of this real quick um, but the other side I don't know it still feels like it's lacking something um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of make a wash up here real quick with just some water um, wa diluted down with paint really. Just some my acrylic brown paint that I've been painting the car with. And I'll just kind of run that over the side here and um, one or two washes and let it dry off and see what that does to the color. So I'll try that now. The color is looking a little bitter on this car after the wash. Um, I think I'm just going to move on to the next step now. Take an old brush that's pretty weathered and bent and should be in the trash almost, but works pretty good for this. And I dip it into a darker brown, kind of stipple it along the edge of the car there. And um, this creates kind of just some road grime along there. Everything from the car moving just to the wheels and things just getting kicked up on there it kind of attracts more towards the bottom I guess so let me just show you kind of what effect I'm going for here um, and yeah I really just do this along the whole length of the car just about all right so the other side's coming along pretty nice and I'm gonna flip it over here and get our tethered and beaten side just to give it more of a match, I'm going to go back and kind of do like you do with rock molds, honestly, and use a very light brown. Go back and highlight some of like the high points and just to give it some more variety and different textures along this side. I'm really liking how this one's coming along here, so I'm going to keep at it here. And uh, yeah, I'll kind of come back to you guys when I'm done with that. And that's going to about wrap up part two here of uh, refurbishing this gondola. So I'm going to go ahead and set this thing aside and kind of let it dry overnight. All the paint and weathering I just applied to it. And uh, get it with some clear coat as well. Um, so yeah, that's going to wrap up this part. And in the next part, part three here, I'm going to take a break from the car itself and build a removable load for this gondola. So stick around for that. And then the last part, we'll do some graffiti work and finish this car off. Appreciate everyone watching who did, and thank you very much. Stick around.